everyone, and welcome to a special Belmont Media Center broadcast of the pregame show for Soccer Night in Belmont. Tonight, the Belmont Marauders boys varsity soccer team take on the Woburn Tanners. I'm Scott Landry, joined by Bill Filler on commentary, his broadcast debut of Soccer Night in Belmont, and Jeremy Meserve on camera on this rainy last day of summer in 2024. Despite the gloomy conditions, it's our joy to welcome you to the broadcast and to change. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to have the pageantry of Soccer Night start soon, but Bill, you know this uh, Belmont boys team well. Your son Owen is one of the two co-captains. Yeah, it's been a... Thanks, Scott, and w welcome everybody to the broadcast. Uh, happy to be here um, commentating tonight. Yeah, the boys are off to a good start so far this year. Um, we're off to a 3-1-1 one, one start and uh, under a new coach, Chris Camille. Bunch of adjustments in terms of personnel and formation, but um, so far so good. So we'll see see what, what comes tonight. So you can see uh, the procession starting as the Champions League theme song is played on the public address system. Uh, the Both of the team's captains uh, lead the team out, lead their teams out and they're uh, walk, walking alongside them. They're youth soccer players from both Belmont and Woburn. And a theme for many years of Soccer Night in Belmont is we live for the nights we remember and you'll never walk alone. That's the theme that's on the far side on the banner tonight. And that this is symbolic of all that. And this is a night that the players hope to never forget because they play one of their best games. But these younger uh, folks hopefully will say that was my first time under the lights at Belmont Soccer Field and it gave me the... Um, intention and the aspiration to someday be wearing maroon on this field to play for the Belmont boys varsity soccer. So now the teams are leading to the front. Uh, this is a procession modeled on Champions League uh, matchups with all the drama, with all the walking. One, you know, one of the best openings of any type of sports event, and congratulations to the folks at Belmont Soccer Night in Belmont, John Carson and Rob Gray at first, and now Pedro Santos and Sean Goulding for keeping so many cool traditions uh, that make this night so fun. So, Bill, this honors soccer in Belmont from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade varsity soccer, and you have had quite a few years of coaching youth soccer in this town. What did it mean to you when you were coaching to have this, and then now to see your son as a senior? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great event, and um, yeah, I've been part of, part of Belmont soccer since the kids were all little. Um, Owen's my youngest, so I think I've been part of Belmont soccer since about 2005, when my oldest was a five-year-old in, in second soccer here. So it's, it's wonderful to see everybody come through the program and kind of reach the levels of high school and, and, you know, give back to the community here. And all three of your children played either for the varsity boys or varsity girls soccer team. So this is kind of the end of an era for you, I'm the sure. The end of a long run. <laughs> We'll see if Bill's crying by the end of the broadcast. You'll, you'll want to tune in to the end A little bittersweet. So we have our public address announcer tonight talking about um, the messages of the key messages of Soccer Night in Belmont and uh, the virtues taught by soccer leading into the uh, singing of the national anthem by members of the Chenery youth team. Many more boys singing the national anthem tonight than earlier this afternoon.
Congratulations, all the kids. Bill, I spoke too soon. I was going to mention the boys because it's sometimes tough for boys to sing in a middle school choir. But I'm not sure any of those boys sang. Yeah, I couldn't hear them if they were singing. <laughs> they had some very strong and loud singers right in the center of your screen. Uh, so, Bill, Belmont, as you mentioned, has a new coach, Chris Camille. Um, how is Belmont playing differently than what we've seen in the last couple of years? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So I think, you know, formation-wise, to start, um, they're playing a different formation. They're they're playing a 4-4-2 this year with a, a diamond in the midfield. Um, in previous years, or at least the last three years under the, the previous coach, they were playing a 3-5-2. So that generally will mean they have a, they have one more player on defense. So They've, a little bit more conservative type of play? A little bit. And... Um, a, a slightly less attacking, even though I, I don't know if that's the intent. Um, so less width. So in, in that 3-5-2 formation, we had the the outside um, midfielders or wing backs who would get up and back and really join the attack. Um, in, in this formation, it's, you know, two forwards and, and the, your number 10 kind of joining the attack. And sometimes the outside uh, midfielders are pushing up as well. So it's a little more compact in the middle, which is, is good in a lot of ways. Um, so I think the boys are getting used to that. And they've been playing their best, in, in my estimation anyway, when they, they, they're possessing the ball and move, keeping the ball moving on the ground. Uh, sometimes, you know, as all high school soccer, they get the tendency to play long balls and play direct, um, which they can also do effectively. But keeping the ball moving and um, you know, switching the field is something that they've been doing very well this year. And so as they've been doing well, are they playing, uh, you know, the structure means, you know, uh, influences the way that they play, but certainly mm -hmm. are they playing more offensively? Are they playing pretty much to try to own the most of the possession? Or are they uh, anchoring it down to prevent goals? Yeah, I think it's it's been um, more of like a possession and, and, and attack, not so much, it, not you know, they're not playing overly defensive, put it that way. And I think um, at times, especially in the, uh, I believe it was the Wakefield game, uh, we created numerous chances building out from the back and, um, you know, stringing together long runs of passes, uh, making nice, nice plays to get shots on goal. Um, so we'll see if we can, uh, what tonight brings. So Belmont comes into the game at 3-1-1. One, and one. Three wins, one tie, one loss. Uh, Woburn comes in at one and four. So Belmont's starting lineup tonight. Thomas Borkowski, will, the senior goaltender, will start. Um, goalkeeper, rather. Across the back, we have Andy Pinot, Owen Filler, Yasim Abdel, Abdelazim. Sorry. Yeah, Yassin. Yassin. Yes, Yassin. Abdelazim. I've almost. That's a tough one. I've already reached <laughs> my uh, quota for butchering names. Sorry, uh, Yassin. And then we have Nico Amir Fazan across the across the back in the midfield. We have Lawrence Two, Captain Andrew Schreiner, Daniel Chang, and Jaden Yan. And the forwards uh, to start are Daniel Liu and Andre Leshner. So two co-captains tonight. Uh, Andrew Sh Schreiner and Owen Filler, your son, they've been friends since they were in kindergarten. They have. They've been, actually, just one one uh, quick change here. Looks like Max Katz is getting the start um, in the midfield today um, at the at the number six position. He wears number six. I saw him out there. Um, but yes, uh, Owen and Andrew, uh, they've been friends since kindergarten. In fact, uh, street mates. Andrew lived on our street for a while. And I had the honor and privilege of coaching them both with uh, with Andrew's dad Andy on the Royal Blue Belmont Second Soccer Team. So so they've been they've been buddies and teammates for a long time. Special season for them that it all culminates where they're captains of the team that's mattered so much to them. Uh, both of the players have been starters for a few years here at Belmont uh, for Belmont and. Uh, many of these players have experience. Uh, this is a deep team for Belmont. Strong senior class, strong sophomore class in particular, and many contributing juniors. No freshmen on the team for Belmont this year. No, it's, I think it's a 
first. For, there's, there's been fre uh, at least one freshman for the last few years, but um, looks like Often not, not shows more about the depth of the program and uh, unless the sh freshman is gonna start, if there's a worthy senior, most of the coaches would like to keep the seniors on the team and maybe at the very end of the season, bring up the freshman to just give them a little experience at the end of the season, but. Who were the primary goal scorers for Belmont so far this season, Bill? So Daniel Liu, uh, I believe is is our top scorer. Uh, he was, he's. Uh, very skilled. Very He's the quick. player just closest to the ball right now, Daniel Lou. That's correct. And uh, he's a returning varsity player, as is Andre Lesh uh, Leshner, number nine, um, who's also contributed up front. Um, coach typically subs in a couple other forwards um, Jake Delorio and Evan Yorkin, uh, who are underclassmen. I believe they're uh, sophomores. Um, they typically have they've gotten a fair amount of playing time this year, which has been great to see. So a pretty mixed attack, um, balanced, and a um, fair amount of substitutions over the first five games. Well, as this game is ready to get underway, we hope it's as, it, it is as exciting as the first <coughs> game that the Belmont Girls Varsity quote-unquote won unofficially through a PK victory uh, after a scoreless... Uh, tie in regulation. Quick, quick paced off of Woburn. Belmont's will get the first throw in of the game. Woburn has a beautiful field at Woburn High School, a brand new high school. They're probably, my guess is, played under the lights uh, there. Um, is this Belmont boys' first game under the lights, Bill, or have they been playing only afternoon games? Or It is. It is the first game under the lights this season. Uh, all the games have been in the afternoon so far. Schreiner with the attempted ball into the box. Unsuccessful. Nico number seven with coming up on that, winning the ball in the middle of the field. We bring a lot of players around the ball. Who was that? Daniel Chang on that side. My. Um, uh, that's that was Daniel Liu, number Daniel 18. Daniel Liu, 18, attempted to beat four Woburn guys. Very aggressive <laughs> at the start by Daniel Liu. Andrew Schreiner taps the ball. Andy Pinot now comes up and wins the ball, tries to control it. Uber anticipates the back pass. Back to Owen Filler, center back for Belmont. Nice way to switch the field, possess the ball. Now up to Daniel. And his attempted pass goes out. It'll be Woburn's throw on the far side. Looks like Nico was trying to make a run down the right side um, from the fullback position, which is good to see. Uh, Nico and Andy, the, the left fullback, have been have been doing that with, uh, with some success this season so far. We're now with the ball win, trying to um, connect on that. Foul on Belmont's 24, Owen Filler on number two for Woburn. I don't like it when rosters, Bill, aren't in numerical order. Yeah. So number two for Woburn is Tyler Pendergast. And we'll have number 10 with the free kick here. That's Noel Tulichen. And looks like he might step aside for number eight. Amlin Esaburi. And this is eight. Good header on that. One by Belmont and cleared. I don't know if that was a planned play, but if it was, it was impressive to send it in and to head it back to a teammate, but unable to get the shot on goal. 
You joined us for the girls game. One of the differences sometimes in boys versus girls varsity soccer is the amount of time balls are headed in the air as a, as a preference. That happens more often. In my experience watching the boys. Good step there by Owen Filler. Owen tries to hit the through ball. Oh, Leshner, Leshner oh. competes, is able to make sure that the goalie is unable to clear it. Andy Pinot comes up from his position number one. Competing nice on that ball. Nice turn by Belmont's 11. And one back by Uburn. Mishandled by Belmont. Able to throw it into the back right corner. And Borkowski comes way out of his goal to clear it. Into the construction zone where they're building the new hockey rink. They'll need a new soccer ball to throw in. So Thomas is a is an amazing uh, goalkeeper. You'll, you'll, I'm sure, notice tonight he likes to play a very aggressive high line, uh, frequently comes out, clears the ball on through balls and long balls, and very effective in doing so. Nice throw in by Woburn into the box, controlled by their number 22. Philly tries the pass, won by Owen Filler. Owen, Owen trying to go over the top to Daniel Chang. Daniel turns, gets tripped, uh, no call on that. Belmont continues to possess, nice turns there. Should be a corner kick. We'll see no. referee giving a goal kick uh, to Woburn instead. Close call there. High school soccer only has two refs, so sometimes they're quite a bit far away and those bang bang plays, it's, it's tough for anybody to tell for sure who it went off. Yeah, definitely some strange rules in Massachusetts high school soccer with, with the two refs and the timeouts. timeouts per half. I think that Massachusetts is the only place in the country where there are timeouts in high school soccer. I, I could be mistaken, but. Yeah, I think it m might have started in youth soccer or whatever, just to give people some water breaks when they were younger kids, and it continued. Cleared out by Belmont's number three there on the back line. That's Yasim Abdelazim, and it'll be Wuverin's first corner kick of the game. So you were talking about uh, balls in the air before. Uh, Belmont, especially number three, you've seen. He does a, he's a big, big kid. He's a great header of the ball and um, able to clear a lot of balls in the air effectively. We'll look for him to try to win the header here on the defensive end for Belmont. Number 10 for Woburn sends it in. And his teammate wins a laser off the head. Nice job. And now it's up to Leshner. Leshner. Good carry all the way into the box. He centers it, it away from the goalie, but nobody there on the back post yet on that great play by Andre Leshner. Great counterattack by Belmont there. First winning the header off the uh, off the corner, and then good clearance by Owen up to Andre, and counterattack it was on. Great pass by him. I think not being able to see exactly where his teammates were, but just hoping he had a teammate coming in to crash the back post, and it was just a little bit ahead of his teammates coming in just to do that. Ball for the header. Now secondly, punched out by the goalie and heads again, and it and goes in. in. Belmont has it. Let's see that, who did it on the replay. I couldn't tell, Bill. That looks like that looks like Daniel Lou. I think Daniel Lou got the uh, got the header. Knocked it in. Belmont takes a 1-0 lead. We'll call it the goal for Daniel Liu until somebody tells us otherwise. So Daniel, as you were saying at the beginning of the broadcast, has been Belmont's top goal scorer so far this season. And he continues that. Belmont takes the early lead against Wuber, and that was great effort in the box. I think Belmont had three players had that ball before Daniel put it in. Hey, 
can sometimes change the dynamics of a game, Bill, when a team gets the early lead like that, particularly when it's on an effort play in the box. Yeah, for sure. I think it, it, always a always an advantage scoring that first goal, especially in a, in a game like tonight where the kids might be feeling some nerves just to take the pressure off a little bit, be able to settle in. I think it's also probably equally difficult if you're the opposing team and now you're playing from behind. We saw when the ball went to goalkeeper for Belmont, uh, Thomas Borkowski, that he rolled it uh, and controlled the ball out of the back end. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but here's a rush by Woburn. Nice win over there. And Belmont now starts the counterattack, three on five. Good ball. Good win into Daniel Chang. He's pushed in the back, but Chang is able to keep control of it. It's good aggressive defense by Woburn, trying to stick with him, but Daniel's quite good with the footwork built. Yeah, Daniel's foot skills are, are very good. Ball just sticks to his feet. Ball up in the air now, this is Pino. Tries to direct it to himself, unsuccessful, and Owen Filler comes up and rewards some of his fans. <laughs> By allowing to touch the soccer ball way up here in the corner of Harris Field. Bigger crowds so far in the boys game over the girls game as the rain has come and gone throughout the night. It is raining lightly uh, hit here. We've had some fits of heavier rain and some fits of, you know, bits of just a little bit of mist. Now I would call it a very light rain. Now on the right sideline, Woburn nicely keeps it in. One of their teammates, four Belmont defenders oh, on great it. Great play by Andrew Schreiner there, stepping in as a second defender. And then Belmont a couple of headers there, and then they're able to clear it out, but good attack on this one by Woburn. And we see a Woburn player down. He's holding his shin or his ankle. It's like number 17 there. Uh, Belmont's Owen Filler encouraging the medical staff to come out. Um, so like, number like Ethan Petrillo is down. Hopefully he's okay. Sitting up now. Certainly a uh, lot of action as the ball was up in the air and folks kicking it, folks heading it. Typically when they hold their shin like that, I, I think it's you just, you know, somebody's trying to kick the ball and maybe they get a piece of the ball, but they get a piece of your leg. So hopefully not too too bad on that. Yeah, seemed unintentional, just uh, looked like a follow through. So this is the beginning or near the beginning of a 11 games in 21 or 23 days for that's the, about as frequent as you'll ever see for yeah team. it's so three pretty, games coming up this week three for games example. this week three games next week uh, we just played on thursday so um important next two weeks of soccer here for the boys hopefully they can stay healthy and full of energy next week's going to be uh especially tough playing lexington and winchester two of the better teams in the middlesex Traditionally, league. some of the better teams in the Middlesex League and among the top teams in the state. Yep. So we hope he's back in the game. Lexington takes a long shot. It's far to Borkowski's left, and it'll be a goal kick for Belmont. I'm sure Belmont will be looking for some redemption uh, against the, uh, the Winchester side who knocked us out of the Elite Eight tournament last year in the Massachusetts State Tournament. Do you Top. know offhand if Winchester has most of their players back from that team? Because they were able to beat Belmont, a strong Belmont team last year, three times. They were. Um, I don't know who's back, but I, I, I was checking their record and it looks like they're off to a strong start. I believe they maybe have one or two ties. The rest are all victories. What will be interesting to see is I would think Belmont's 
new coach, Chris Camille, knows a lot of the Winchester players. I believe he does. Coached club soccer in Winchester for the Sachems Football Club for many years. So he might be able to tell him, make sure you don't you kick it to this side of this guy. Right. Or, yeah, we'll we see. need the, we need a little uh, inside inside help against that team. They seem to have our number over the over the last few years. Physical play, as you tend to see in high school varsity boys soccer. Um, very, not very easy to win balls most of the time without having to um, be physical to clear space for yourself and not only to win the ball, but to turn and get it to one of your teammates. So this will be Owen Fuller, it looks like, from the structure of Belmont's Team right now, they're looking from the kick it, tried in the box. Great big kick just outside to the 15 yard line. Won by Daniel Liu, but in, unable to control it, just cleared out by Wuburn. And it'll be thrown in by Andy Pinot. Fake out by Belmont, unsuccessful as the player intentionally let the ball go through his legs. Hoping a teammate would be right behind him. Owen Filler tries to connect with Leshner up the top. Looks like it's just out, out of bounds. bounds. It'll be Wuburn's throw. The player that let that ball go through his legs was Max Katz, central defender for Belmont with a start tonight, number six. So I think Belmont's doing a pretty good job so far of um, playing aggressively and putting some good pressure on Woburn while also feel like they're controlling possession um, the majority of time here. Good win and move by Daniel Liu. Physical, a lot of grabbing and holding. Oh, Centers it. There it is. And a shot, what a great play. I believe that was Andrew Schreiner who was just robbed by the keeper there. Great it, setup. From here, it looked like it was going straight in the corner. The keeper anticipated it, used his left hand to keep it out. And Good step by Yassine. Counter attack, well defended by a scene from Belmont. Good back and forth action. Good step by seven for Wuburn to win it, but back right back by Belmont. Now nice Lester to Lou. He's in. Lou's gonna get the shot. And slide tackle by Wuburn, and they're calling it against Belmont. Interesting call. Yeah, Daniel went in kind of hard there for the ball. Um, He's a dynamic forward, tough to cover. Looks like he can go left and right equally as well. He's very shifty, very hard to, to guard, especially when he uh, has his legs and he's, as he does tonight, and he's running full speed. Very, Extremely hard to defend. Very quick touches. So Burkowski way out, can't play this one with his hands because he's outside of the goalie box, so he just clears it up to Andy Pinot. Andy taps it to himself. Now back to Fuller. Fuller lands a 50-yard pass oh, to Daniel Liu, who feeds Andre Leshner, and Leshner shoots, and he, he scores! 2-0, Belmont. Three players touch that. What a great counterattack. Filler to Daniel Liu, 40 or so yards, and quick tap to Leshner, who takes it in, and just beats the defender. The goalie was in about the right spot, but that shot had a lot on it. Plus the ball is wet and the goalie wasn't perfectly square to it and it beat him. So Leshner scores at about the 24-31 mark of the first half to put Belmont up two to zero. Excellent play. Great finish by Andre using the left foot there. Yeah, from this angle, it did look like the, the keeper had, had the net pretty well protected, but 
Andre did power it through. And yeah, very slippery, uh, slippery ball, wet night tonight. So excellent play. So uh, one of the things you were talking about that's unique about MIAA soccer is the ability to call timeouts. And it looks like Woburn just called a timeout. To me, this looks like your regroup timeout. Okay, guys, we didn't want to be down yep. to nothing after 16 minutes. What else are you saying to them if you're, if you're coaching Woburn, Bill? I mean, I'm saying settle down. I'm saying we need to amp it up and play a bit more aggressively here. Um, Seems like Belmont's winning most of the 50-50 balls. I think Woburn needs to, to kind of do a better job there if they want to compete in this game of uh, being first to some of these balls in the midfield and challenging for the, some of those long balls that we've been playing. They're really up for grabs. Whoever wants it, whoever wants it most is gonna is gonna win it. So. So it sounds like you would be saying to them, hey. It's two nothing. There's still a long time to play, but we got to be winning more possession. We got to be winning right. more one on one battles. Focus on the little things. Get some momentum. Get some rhythm. Get some control of the game. Lessen Belmont's confidence, because if things don't change, this could be a route. It could be a long night, but an exciting night because here on the broadcast <laughs> of Belmont Media, we love goals, Bill. Right, especially after the girls' game when it was goalless until the till the penalty, so I think the goals are welcomed by everybody, you know, well, other than Woburn fans. Now, Leshner on that goal, he was down the left side. Is he a left, does he shoot most of his shots with his left? Or? I, I don't think he's left-footed, but he's he's learned to use, uh, use his left, which is good to see. Um, he was one of the kids who I, <laughs> I coached a few of these kids when they were younger. Andre was one of them, and we used to tell him, not just him, a lot of the kids, you gotta, you gotta work on your, your non-dominant foot. And that's a perfect example of why you need to be strong on both feet. How you do that, Andy Pineau, with some good ups on that header win. Uh -oh. And we have just uh -oh. lost lights here at Belmont's Harris Field. Some uh, of the kids are thinking it's Halloween already. Now we're starting to see uh, this has never happened before. I've never Unprecedented. Seen this. <laughs> it looks like we have a couple substitutions that I see uh, some few different players out there. At least one. I see Colin Green, number 15, who appears to have come in for Andy Pinot at left back. We have Itai Galani, number four, who is going to be in at the midfield. And looks like number 20, Jaden Yan. I see any other substitutions. It looks like those are the subs um, that they made during the break here. And it looks like it's going to be a drop ball. I wasn't sure exactly what they were going to do because it, the ball was in play and the guy shoots it pretty hard. Yeah. Would that count? That would count if it's scored. I guess right? it would have. He was definitely going for goal there. Interesting. That would have woken him up, but it goes to Borkowski's right, and now Thomas Borkowski, Belmont's goalie, will have a goal kick. Now to Andrew Schreiner. Again, Schreiner. Who's 15, Bill? That's Colin Green streaking in on the left. Great nice cross. cross by Colin oh. Green, and it deflects off of Woburn's defender and almost into the goal. Great reaction by their goalkeeper to change direction quickly. Yeah, that play kind of knock it wide. Sorry, Scott. That, that play kind of came out of nowhere. Quick transition by Belmont. They got it out wide. Andre and Colin were running right next to each other, but Andre played it up to an advanced position to Colin, who got the cross in. And now Belmont will do the corner. Good ball in the air. One with a quick header by Woburn, and Woburn clears it out. Belmont trying to keep it in. Good ball win, and again, nice play by their goalie. Stepping up. Header by Owen Filler. There's Itai Galani, nice win by him. Itai number four. Belmont's come out of this 
um, lights out quite well. Yeah. Quick, good touches. Yep, and they were ready. Changed up the midfield a bit. It looks like Jaden Yan, number 20, is playing the uh, holding, the number six holding mid. And it looks like they moved Lawrence two up to the attacking midfielder position with Itai and Andrew um, in the outside midfielder roles. It'll be Wuverns throwing on the far side. Through the the early season, how many subs have Belmont been typically playing, Bill? A, a handful or? How? Yeah, Belmont's been substituting um, a fair amount of players. I think uh, you know, compared to some previous years where there have been very limited subs, I think the coach is doing a great job of getting uh, a lot of players involved, and I want to say. I, I don't know the exact number, but I would say, you know, between five and eight additional players seem to be coming on per game. Um, keeping the players fresh. Keeping them fresh. He, he, he tends to cycle uh, with the substitutions, the midfield and the forwards. The, the two center backs usually stay, there's limited subs on the center backs. He, uh, the outside backs do get subbed as well, as, as we're seeing here with um, Colin Green going in for Andy Pinot. Uh, I've yet to see additional forwards, which I'm guessing we probably will. Uh, it's still early in the game here. But yeah, it's, it's, it's actually nice to see uh, multiple players getting time. Personally, I've never figured out the teams that don't sub a lot because unless they don't have quality backups, you would think your team will be stronger at the end <laughs> if your better players, your starting players, just have 10 minutes of rest or it doesn't have to be a long time. But, right, yep. And then for the players that come in, if they know that they're only going to give a five-minute shift, that these are good quality players who can go as hard as possible for five minutes and can often lead to a change of pace, a change of play. and Definitely, they could be the spark that, you know, your team might be looking for, or just, you know, bringing an additional look or dynamic to the game. And Belmont's uh, first substitutions did pay off within 30 seconds as it led to a great scoring opportunity. See if they, the new players in this game can lead to a couple more. Very nice head, header by Wuburn to pass it back to the teammate. And as you were talking, Thomas Borkowski, Belmont's experienced goalie, is one of the more aggressive high school goalies you'll see. He really is. Coming way out to win the balls. It's a, you know, a risk-reward situation with the play in the high line. And um, Thomas usually makes the right decisions, I have to say. But for the rest of the team, you got to be um, wanting to be even more aggressive when your goalie is absolutely doing that. knowing that he has your back, knowing that the defense, as a defender, you can take more risks, knowing that you have a goalie who'll be looking to cover for you. Well, I think that's yeah, it's very true. I think he, it by playing a high line, it takes it takes away other teams trying to play over the top or long balls or through balls because he's even as you mentioned, if it gets by the defenders, he's there to kind of pick it off before any, any danger happens. Colin Green uh, will have the throw in. He is a junior for Belmont. Sorry, a senior. I think Colin Colin's a Green, senior, that's right. Class of 2025. Jaden and Itai, who are also in the middle, are, are uh, two of our promising sophomores. No freshmen on this team, so they're among the youngest players on the roster. And Jaden was a, a member of the team last year as a freshman. So this is a, he's getting a lot more minutes this year, which is, which is great for him and well-deserved. Way in the far corner, it'll be a Belmont throw-in, not a uh, 
corner kick, just missed being a corner for a while. Thrown into the box, a little bit physical. Belmont got what it wanted, it went past the end line, now it'll be a corner kick. Belmont scored its first goal, if you're just joining us, off a corner kick from this corner, where three Belmont players caught their heads on the ball, uh, and the third one was Daniel Liu, who put it in the net. Another good uh, corner kick on the line, kept in by Belmont, but taken away by Woburn. Good play by Jaden there to break up the counterattack. Ball gets past Belmont's defense, but won by Borkowski. Borkowski surveys the field, wants to start another attack with a long ball. Gets it to Leshner. Handball by Colin Green or by mistake. It'll be a Woburn direct kick. For about eight minutes since we have the blackout here, where we lost the lights for about 25 minutes. But we were able to see the Arlington Town Day fireworks while we waited. Neat little bonus. Belmont back in action, trying to get their third goal. Woburn trying to cut Belmont's lead in half. Oof. Owen. Filler wasn't trying to do that, obviously. Good sportsmanship by Owen to come up to apologize to number 13. Yeah, he just put his, th his foot through that one, and it, it, I think it caught number 13 in the head. Or, Owen, or, tends, uh, Owen <laughs> tends to step up and crush the ball. Yeah, and, he's not shy. And uh, our producer and cameraman, Jeremy Reserve, said, rightly so, that'll wake you up. Line of the night so far. Yeah, he'll be feeling that one tomorrow, unfortunately. Hope he's okay, number 13. He seems to be. We're joking about it because clearly he got up immediately yeah, and everything fine. like that. But it's uh, sometimes it could be uh, that when it struck that hard from that little distance, it can be a concussion in some levels of soccer. Good play there by Jaden. Nice by Andrew Schreiner. Gets around his third guy. Doesn't pass because it would have been offsides, I think. And um, Woburn steps up. Nice play by Filler. Now back to Schreiner. Schreiner trying to hit the through ball, but a little bit too much pace on it. Picked up by Woburn's goalie. Good show of skills by Belmont's Senior co-captain, Andrew Schreiner, here he, here he is again. Taking advantage of his space in the middle of the field. Woburn crowds him at the end, takes the ball away. Owen Filler called by the referee for a foul. Not exactly sure what the foul was, but came up and made an aggressive tackle. It'll be Belmont's throw. 14 minutes or so left in the first half. Belmont two, Woburn zero here at Soccer Night in Belmont, our ninth annual Soccer Night. Leshner does a good job of keeping the ball in, right in front of the Belmont bench. Complaining he was pushed in the back. Couple of subs coming in for Woburn. Number three is one of them. That is Santino Castillo. Looks like we have number four and number 17 as well, I believe, for Woburn. Number four is Andrew Zelaya, and 17 is Ethan Petrillo, who had gone out of the game early with a shin injury. Good to see him back. And it looks like the next Belmont sub here will be Jake DiOrio, who will be going in at forward most likely. Jake is a junior. Do you know, Bill, is this his first year on the varsity or was he on the team last year? I believe this is his first year on varsity. I think he was a JB player last year and he's been, 
he's been very good so far. Um, nice addition to the team. Brings a lot of speed. Also looks like number 19, Aiden Doken, will be coming in as well, likely in the midfield. I believe Aiden's older brother played. Yes, for he did. Belmont Boys uh, varsity. Anthony. Anthony. Former Doken. captain of the team a couple couple of seasons ago. <clears throat> so it looks like Aiden is probably playing the left number eight position in the midfield here, and uh, Jake has gone in at left forward, um, substituting Andre. So we'll see if these guys can connect. Good header by Aiden. Good way to get involved right off the bat. Physical play. Great play by Colin. Uh, looks like the ref has unfortunately called the foul there. I have to say Colin Green is a, a very strong athletic player. Uses his body well. Very He's physical. come out of some pretty competitive battles with the ball already a few times in the last 10 minutes. Referee telling the Woburn players to move the ball way back. It's pointing to a general spot. Woburn's player is asking, is this far enough? Moved it four yards. But a nice Good win in the air placement. by Yassine. And good win by Belmont. You say that Yassine is quite strong on the headers. He is. It's a, definitely a, a, a strong point in his game. He is, he's a good, he's a very good player. Stands out on balls in the air, for sure. Nice closeout by Aiden Dawkin there. Speaking of sophomores, uh, Belmont also, we've, I think we have a very strong future uh, in the defending area. Uh, sophomore Meshkeen Javidin, um, who hasn't seen action yet tonight, is another center back. He's a great defender. And, you know, I think the future is certainly bright for the, assuming they both end up playing um, center backs going forward, but they're, they're both very capable players and add a lot to the team. Center backs are two critical positions. If you've got two good center backs and a decent goalie, you're in every single soccer game. Absolutely. And the, the, the Belmont team last year, um, you know, we, we had a big, big hole to fill this year at center back. Uh, where we, you know, I mentioned we, we played three in the back, so we basically had three center backs, and uh, none of them were returning. So, so that's one of the reasons why Owen, I guess, is playing your son center back. Owen it is. was one of the wing backs. He last was one year. of the wing backs, and <clears throat> he's, I think he started this this season off um, maybe playing on the outside, and they they decided to move him in to to get a little bit more support and experience in the in the middle there you'll see a lot of captains on soccer teams be a center back as in in a lot of ways they're a quarterback um, they're making sure the team is set up correctly their uh, communication is super important so your son owen is one of the captains is is so is andrew schreiner and Recently, they both committed uh, to play college soccer. Tell us about that, Bill. Yeah, they, they both did recently commit, and um, they're super excited. Andrew Schreiner committed to play at, at Dickinson College, which is down in uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, very good soccer program down there, Division Three. And Owen, uh, he recently committed to RPI, that's uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, that's out in Troy, New York. So he's he's really excited, he loved the school. Um, they have a good soccer program as well. And yeah, it's it's, it's pretty cool for the, the two boys. They've been playing together since, you know, Belmont second soccer. And nice they're gonna a, continue nice to attempt. Continue their journey in, at the collegiate level. 
That was Jake DiOrio who was taken down there. It'll be a, a free kick by Belmont. So, um, uh, so the Dickinson team is quite strong this year. How's the RPI team? The RPI team's off to a bit of a slow start this year. I think they're they're a young team. Um, we were actually this afternoon watch, watching one of their games on a live stream. Uh, they lost 1-0 to Oneonta. Um, they're you know competitive soccer. T tough division they play in the Liberty League and um, Dickinson is I believe they they have a strong team so that the uh, former Belmont player Sachel uh, Kenkray who was a the MVP for Belmont High last year he's a freshman there and he's on that that team as well and I, I believe they're ranked you know top five in the country right undefeated, now undefeated I think yep so uh, it's a super program and like really competitive uh, soccer. Game getting a little bit more physical and chippy here. We'll see. Um, also, the conditions are getting colder and rainier. It's probably the hardest rain we've seen um, all day. That's oh. Andrew Schreiner on the shot. Well positioned for it is Wuburn's goalie who instantly gets it out. That's a great distribution by him to start a counterattack. But it, it, I think it's a you know for for any aspiring young players who want to play in college, I think it's a you know it's, it's a testament to the the program here in Belmont. Uh, both Owen and Andrew Sachel, others who have, have and there's been many others who come before them who've gone through the Belmont soccer program and ended up playing collegiately, having some good careers. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice thing to see. Attempted through ball by Belmont, won by Wuburn's goalie. Owen again sending balls into the new hockey arena. As far away from the net as he can, he can send them. Does he do that for practice just because he's, you know, for the clear balls that he has? I think he might be, uh, Belmont had a game the other day against Cambridge, and I think he was he was wishing that he might have put his foot through a ball that he was in great position for that he won, and then it took a funny bounce, and Cambridge player made a, made a great play and, and scored a goal. So I think he's taking no chances <laughs> in this game. So it looks like it'll be a Wuburn corner kick here. Because of the rain, we're up here in a temporary kind of position, and you'll see some obstructed views just from the poles of our tent, so we apologize for that. Number 10 for Wuburn with this corner kick here. A laser in, one by Belmont on the head, and cleared. Nice play. And then gone outside, but Belmont continuing the counterattack on the throw. That's number 20 for Belmont. Jaden Yan. Substitution for Belmont coming in, number 13, Evan Yorkin. Evan Yorkin. He's the second forward now, uh, substituting Daniel Liu. The last five minutes. Belmont player down. I, it's number four. Ital, Gal Ital Galani, glad he's staying in the game. Is he taking many free kicks here, Bill? Jaden is, he's, he's taken, I've definitely seen Great him take ball. some. It was a very good ball. Good attempted win there. Down to the last two minutes and 54 seconds here in the half. It's 
Been an eventful half. Two goals for Belmont and a 25 minute light delay as the generator needed to be fixed here at Belmont Harris Field. We thank all the people that worked on it. Good win by Itai. Done such a great job of winning the balls in the air all game. We saw another one by Itai there. Avoiding a big collision there as the center back or holding mid for Woburn was well placed. Looks like we have a foul behind the ball here. Coming in, wants to talk with Ital Galani. Allows him to stay in the game. Excellent ball. Borkowski is there, he's run into. Definitely some contact there by number 20 on, on Thomas, but Fair game, he's going for the ball. He's going for the ball. And as we've talked, Thomas Borkowski, one of the more aggressive goalies you'll ever see. This looks like it should be offsides and it is called offsides. Two zero Belmont, just um, a little bit more than a minute left to go, we think, in the first half. Exciting first half for Belmont. Lots of offensive chances. They've controlled much of the play. Everybody's screaming at the refs at the end of this half, Bill. Belmont's coach, Chris Camille, yelling at the ref, like, I'm closer than you. Yep, that, that was not, that ball was out. We were close enough to see that. That ball wasn't out. Didn't look like it was. Looked like the ref might have been uh, screened by the players on the sidelines, but um, that's a perfect, close, perfect like exa example of having a ref that's he's 40 yards away from the play without having the assistant refs. It's, hard, it's a hard call for him to make. Excellent step by Owen Filler there. Sorry, it by number 15, Colin Green. Colin was playing more to the middle part of the field, so I assumed he was a center D, not the outside D. Now we get the two whistles, which signifies halftime. And at the half, Belmont two, Woburn zero. Stay tuned for a lot of youth soccer players on the field coming up. And Bill and I will be back for the second half shortly. Welcome back to Soccer Night in Belmont for the second half. Belmont leads Woburn 2-0. Scott Landry and Bill Filler here on commentary. Bill, what would you change if you're Woburn? What would I change? I would, um, I mean, they obviously need goals. I would maybe think about making a potential tactical switch. I haven't really been paying too much attention to their formation, but they might want to think about pushing some guys further up forward here to generate a little more offense. They haven't had many, if any, shots on goal this in the first half, so they, they, they want to definitely need to increase that. Similarly, I, if I were them, I would be pushing my defensive line way up, um, shorten the field, get more bodies in the box, and just get it in there and you know, Borkowski, as you mentioned earlier, is taking away the long balls, so you gotta just bring more numbers. Absolutely. Mix it up a bit, because whatever they were doing in the first half, Belmont seemed to have answers for it. And if you're Belmont, you just wanna keep doing what you were doing. That that was a very strong first half, not too much to improve if you're Belmont. Yeah, very strong first half. Looks like we have a couple different players out out here right now, I see number eight here on the uh, the right back. That's Iggy Matoris. I believe Iggy's a 
sophomore or junior? Maybe you can check that. Um, he is a junior. He's a junior. And it looks like Andy Pinot is back in on the left. And it seems like our midfield is back to the starting midfield, uh, starting players who, who began the game here with Lawrence Two, Max Katz, Daniel Chang, and Andrew Schreiner. Good takeaway there, Belmont. Now up to Daniel Liu, nice. Good first touch. Tap to himself. Good tackle by number eight for Woburn. I mean, it's tough in the lights, Bill, when you. And that with the tiny font, too. This is like 6.5. <laughs> it and starts I'm, with an E. And That's I'm wearing a Maury, my glasses something and I like still that. can't see it. Yeah. We, we ask Amin's family, if they're watching, to forgive <laughs> us. So another player uh, worth mentioning here at, um, for Belmont is number 16, Lawrence Two, who's, who's playing the holding midfielder. Lawrence was another freshman um, who made varsity last year and contributed significant minutes to the team. Uh, played really well, and it, it's good to see him out there and um, playing aggressively and playing strong. Looks like Belmont has a great mix of seniors, juniors, and sophomores on this team. Um, that's the sign of a great program where it's not Absolutely. just one class, but it's several classes with three, four, five, six players who can all make a deep contribution on the team. Andy Pineau, now up to Schreiner. Good link up there in the midfield. Nice cross by Daniel Lou header in. What a shot. That's Andrew Schreiner finishing that wow. on a great cross by Daniel Lou. His second assist after his first goal, Daniel Lou to Andrew Schreiner at the 36. 11 mark to put Belmont up three to zero. That happened so fast. That happened really fast. And and to me, what made that play, obviously that the the cross and the finish were fantastic. The build up through the middle there, there was a lot of one, two touch passing, bang, 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 to, to get the ball up the field quickly, get it out wide, and a perfect finish there by Schreiner. That's exactly what you want to happen. You want to get some space, you want to cross it, and then you want your players to just be rushing in lanes and uh, to be able to head it in quickly. Ruben's goalie had no chance on that. No, he didn't. So Daniel Liu, one goal, two assists tonight. Yeah, he used his speed there to get to get around the player to get the cross in and delivered a perfect ball to Andrew. As a central midfielder, Andrew probably doesn't score two, as many goals as the forwards. You think it's his first goal of the season? I think he might have one one other goal. Uh, that was Andrew Schreiner. I believe he's, he scored at least one other time this season, but I might be mistaken on the numbers there. We'll give him one. Yeah, we'll give him one. Better to give him one than take one away. Absolutely. Clear it out by Belmont. It'll be Wuburn's throw on the right side. This is an interesting moment in the game. If you're Wuburn, we'll see whether they just gritty try to get one and then a second one or Three nothing under these rainy conditions. Um, you start to think that the probability of victory for Belmont is pretty high. Yeah, especially in a sport like soccer, when you're down three goals, it's goals are not easy to come by. It's pretty easy to get demoralized. Uh, hopefully, Woburn, for their sake, stays tough and keeps fighting here till the end. I'm sure they will. And in the rainy conditions to boot. 
We're glad you're with us. We're glad to be able to provide this coverage on Belmont Media for all those in Belmont who may have been here earlier, but just said in these rainy conditions, much rather support the team from the luxury of your living room or a computer screen or a phone, wherever you might be. So thank you for joining us. Belmont girls uh, prevailed in penalty kicks in the first uh, first game of the doubleheader. Officially, it will go in the Middlesex League as a 0-0 tie, but for soccer night, they play an unofficial uh, penalty kick round, and it was tremendous, and it was exciting and so fun. And in this game, Belmont has a commanding 3-0 lead. Daniel Liu scored at about the 32-minute mark of the first half, followed up about eight minutes later by Andrew Leshner, Andre Leshner, rather, to put Belmont up 2-0. And then we had about a 25-minute um, generator out delay or blackout or whatever you would call it. And then when play resumed, there were no goals for the remainder of the first half. And we just saw four minutes into the second half. Belmont get its third goal. Uh, Daniel, sorry, Andrew Schreiner from a great cross by Daniel Liu. Speaking of Daniel Liu, he's into the action again. Well defended by number eight for Woburn. And it'll be a handball, I believe, on Belmont. Number eight is Amin Asubra. <coughs> Woburn with the, their best offensive effort of the day. Close, close to a tackle in the box. They're able to weave through the, the defenders there. Good helping um, on the play by Max Katz there. And Thomas coming out strong to take away that attempt. A lot of plays up in the air. I have to say, Belmont is um, very impressive at how they do whatever they can to win the 50-50 balls like that, to win the balls in the air. One of the reasons they're up 3-0. Good step by Owen Filler there, not able to totally win the ball. A good wrestling match. And the foul is called on Woburn. This will be Andrew Schreiner leaving the ball for Owen Filler. Owen has already shown us he can blast the ball. He keeps it on the keeps it low to the ground. Up to Daniel Chang. Good step, Good step there by, by Andy Pino. Good job, even though the ball went out of bounds of grinding and winning the ball in the midfield there by uh, Andy and Lawrence and Daniel Chang. Especially against the stronger teams in the Middlesex League, that, that those battles in the midfield are so important to win. It's a difference between be, you know, playing on the, on the defense versus you come out with the ball, now it's time to attack. Belmont, uh, you know, we, we talked about a little bit of their record um, to date so far. They've, they've played really well. Um, with one exception, the game against Arlington last week uh, was not our best. And we were really not winning those 50-50 battles in the midfield. And Arlington was just faster and quicker and more aggressive. And they were coming away with the ball, which was leading the scoring chances. And kind of puts you on the back heel when you don't win those balls that are up for grabs there. Sometimes an early loss in a season can refocus a team. Belmont uh, needs to be at their best next week as they play Winchester and Lexington. 
Good run by Wubern here, but not given up. Nice play by Max Katz. Or I might have gotten that wrong. Yeah, I think that, that might have been, been Iggy. Eight. Yep. It's yep. number eight, Iggy. I think I'm going to start a business after tonight, which makes really huge numbers, Bill, for people's <laughs> jerseys, for 50-something people, broadcasters, trying to see at night. Nice move by Max Katz, right? He nutmegs his Woburn defender. Now to Daniel Chang, back to Katz. Katz tries to slide it along, and they, they call in offsides, I believe, as Woburn plays the trap. Looks like it. I think they got Andrew Schreiner for going, for being forward and then come back, came back behind the line. Getting greedy for a second goal there. Uh, yeah. Gets contagious, especially on soccer night. Everybody wants to score. Wants to uh, host the, uh, hold the Phoenix Cup, maybe win the player of the game. Looks like, a it looks like we have a timeout here called by Woburn. 28-18 remaining second half. Belmont with a 3-0 lead here on soccer night. Teams get one timeout per half. Is that the way that it That's goes? That's correct. Then? So, not to jinx anything, but Woburn's last timeout, 15 seconds after the power went out. Let's hope that that's not happening again. We're trying to again. stoke drama. It's a 3-0 <laughs> yeah. game, Bill. What do you think? I don't know. I the mean, odds, the probability, what would ESPN probabilities say about the light staying on this the rest of the game? David, well, it might be Woburn's best chance at uh, not being defeated if the game can't continue. <laughs> Let's put it that way. What would be the rule on that? Yeah, I, I don't know what the MIA rule is. I, I would assume if after like if a half was played that it would stand but i, I don't know what the uh the or is it a courtesy were. thing where the woman coach would say maybe like or maybe they make up the, the final 20 odd minutes but being down three nil um but you never know we have to go out to woburn and play them um I'm not sure when that is on the schedule but woburn's always a, a tough opponent in woburn um previous years last year included i I think Woburn might have beaten Belmont. We're going to resume action here. 28 minutes left in this game. 3-0. Belmont currently leading Woburn. In the second half of the doubleheader of soccer night. Nice move there by Belmont. Around. Great move. Good, good passing on the turn. Max Katz now trying to win it. Really nice move by Daniel Chang, beating that defender and then putting the ball into a perfect position at the top of the box there. Belmont just could not convert. Nice attempt but didn't go to the angle that he was thinking. Andy Pinot wasn't able to control the ball. Won by Woburn. Woburn on the counter attack. Great job by Andy there. Not giving up on the play after losing the initial ball. Sprinting back and, and helping uh, to make sure that the player didn't go forward any more than he was already going forward. Way to not give up on that play. Gotta like the compete level, the grittiness of everybody on the Belmont team. Looks like Jake DiOrio is back in at forward. I'm not sure when that substitution happened. I think it was relatively recent. Yassim with another ball win. Woburn screaming, thinking it was a handball in the box, looking for a PK. Refs didn't see it or not hearing him. From here, it looked like it hit his chest, not his arm.
Woburn's had some difficulty putting together three or four passes in a row. They've had some good offensive moves where an individual player is able to beat a couple of the Belmont defenders, and they've had a um, you know a couple of combinations where it's maybe one pass, but the the multiple passes where they would control possession and really build the attack haven't been there yet. Seeing three Belmont players coming in now. Number 15 coming back into the game. That's Colin Green. Looks like he's coming in for Andrew Schreiner. We have Aiden Doken going back in. And it looks like number 21, who I was mentioning before, uh, Meshkeen Javidin, is coming in at right center back for Yassine. So our first look at Meshkeen tonight. And Aiden going back in and Colin going back in. And Mishkeen has gotten some decent playing time throughout the season thus far? He has. Um, I'm expecting that he'll probably be getting some more going forward. But oh, he's got a runner on the left. Nice pass out to the right. This is Max Katz. It looks like he'll get a shot off, but he chooses to pass. And Woburn anticipates it. Unselfish play by Max Katz. It was. Good build up there. We had a, a lot of numbers. Looks like Nico Amorfazan is going back in uh, at right back. He'll be taking the corner. He's, he's subbing out uh, Iggy Matoris. So Nico's been doing a great job at right back here. Looks like he's deferring the corner. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that on the broadcast here. Belmont's toying with playing, taking a short corner here, but looks like they are not going to. So Max Katz moves back out. Ball comes into the box, not oh. clearly, not cleanly. Belmont does get a shot that's blocked. And Woburn clears. Good competitive corner kick for both teams on that. I think you can likely hear the rain uh, on the broadcast uh, coming down. It. Um, a lot of umbrellas around us. I think you can hear the sound from that. And in my sense, the rain is harder now than it's been all night. But soccer is one of those games that on an artificial turf like this, you can still keep playing the game. Um, and many players love playing in the rain conditions like like now. Belmont wins it, now they got a three on two. Just held it a little bit too long. Yeah, it looks like he had Daniel Lou open on the right there. He was taking some big touches, which when he would have ideally passed it, the ball was just not close enough to him to make that pass. Good hustle by Rubin to get all the way back. Yeah, that's a good header by Meshkeen there in the middle. Oh. And then oh. Owen Filler not able to clear it after the ball was headed over Thomas Borkowski's head. Is there an offside call or something? I'm not I sure. heard some whistle. It's unclear. Or a foul. There's a lot of contact ball there. Ball ended in the up middle. in the back of the net. Not sure what the call is. Looks like it's not a goal. Woburn is frustrated by that. If I were to totally speculate, they did run into the goalie. So could have been a foul on that. And it looks like hopefully Thomas is okay there. It looks like he might have. Got a little contact to the to his face. So it stays 3-0. Belmont leading Woburn here at Soccer Night in Belmont. So that was a great example of a play where both Belmont center backs were in really good position. They won the initial ball, but somehow the striker was able to get his body in there to kind of overpower we get a little touch in. Uh, fortunately for Belmont, there was either a foul or offside. I'm not sure what it was. It must have been a foul. 
Good ball win by Daniel Liu coming all the way back. And then Daniel gets cleared out, but referee saying it was all ball. And for some very strange reason, he says it's Wuburn's ball. Daniel Liu is down right now. It looks like they're gonna sub him out. He might just be cramping up. He's had a great game. So number 20, definitely the biggest threat for uh, Woburn's offense here. If I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Duke or Duck St. Pierre? I'm guessing Duke. Duke, okay, very athletic. Uh, physical. Physical, he made a great play on that, uh, to challenge for that ball, that, that goal that was disallowed there. But um, somebody who Belmont definitely needs to keep their mm -hmm. eye on. Now joining us on the broadcast is Sean Goulding. Uh, Sean is one of the co-leaders uh, of Soccer Night in Belmont in his second year with Pedro Santos. So even in the rain, Soccer Night in Belmont's a, a, a tremendous success, Sean. It, it definitely is. We're, we're really proud of the community come out the way they have. Um, obviously, it's not the most inviting atmosphere with the rain. But, you know, showed some resilience. The little kids came. They played the game, the, the halftime game with the, the girls game. Great. They're here for the walkout. Great participation from the community. No, we're, we're, we're really pleased. What contingencies do you, you and Pedro plan for bad weather? Like two days ago, it seemed like <laughs> the weather was going to be great, and then all of a sudden it turned to be, you know, pretty nasty at times, but the players still show up. But what, what are the types of things you change when there's bad weather? Well, I guess as a player, you, you, you really don't think of it. It kind of is what it is. I think, I think the only thing you have to really worry about is, you know, a slippery, bouncy ball and stuff like that. I mean, but the players, they're used to playing these kind of conditions. They don't think anything of it. A lot of them play club, and their club games are in February sometimes outside. So, I mean, I, the players definitely aren't, you know, they might be a little uncomfortable on the bench, you know, but it's all said and done. I don't think they really think about the weather at all. I think they just play right through it. I mean, if you look at the Woburn bench right now, right in front of us, you know, they're all, some of these kids are just, they're all engaged, they got a shirt, you know, got a jacket on, and then they're just kind of, no one seems to be, they're all staring, staring at the game. They're all engaged, no one seems to be bothered by the rain. So I was wondering at the conclusion of the girls game, if the ideal ending for the soccer night games from yours and Pedro's perspective is a double shootout, am I right? Um, you know, I, 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 on double shootout, I, I think having the shootout's great. I mean, just to kind of, um, it, for MIA rules, it means nothing, right? MIA won't recognize the shootout because that's not part of the whole thing. So as far as MIA is concerned, it goes down as a, as a tie. But for us here at soccer night, someone's got to win the game. Someone has to hoist the trophy, right? So, so as far as we're concerned, you know what? It's just, it's, it's less, it's, but you have to, you have to crown a winner one way or another. You need that little, they need the selfie with the trophy. They need a little celebration. So I, I am, you know, for us, when it's all said and done, I think, you know, there's two winners, no matter what, whether it's through regulation time or overtime, we, we just have to have, someone has to have the pictures with the trophy and enjoy that little moment. And when in the planning do the coaches, particularly like the Woburn coaches or whoever's visiting, um, learn about that rule that if it's a tie in regulation, we're gonna do a penalty shootout? Well, in tonight's case, they learned pretty much right before it happened. <laughs> so we, we let them know uh, not long, you know, we told them this is what's going on. Um, we actually, is more about letting the referees know. Um, you know, I walked up to the ref with five minutes left in the game and said, by the way, this, uh, uh, fortunately, it was a referee did this last year. Not that there was an overtime last year, but I think he, he's aware of the event and he appreciates what the event is. So I said to Michael, look, we're going to go right into shootout. Are you okay with that? He goes, absolutely. Someone has to win this. Right, of course. Perfect. <laughs> I'm like, that. Oh, you're on board. I'm not going to get an argument from the referee. Wonderful. And the kids, they, they got it done quickly, and it didn't, you know, it didn't delay the second game, which is ideal. So it's the ninth soccer night in Belmont. Many of the players playing on the varsity walked in the processions in the first, second, third year here. Um, it's meant a tremendous amount to... Belmont, uh, mm -hmm. with all the the building and construction here and the uh, challenges for almost every sports team, Harris Field has stayed Harris Field, and we've been able to have soccer night in Belmont even during the, the COVID pandemic year. So what does it mean to you and Pedro seeing that this continues to grow, still continues to be a 
tremendous night, perhaps the biggest gathering in all of Belmont in any calendar year. Well, I, I, I think it's what's really important, but our goal is to keep it going. I think anyone who's played in this match, you know, good, bad weather, whatever it may be, is actually anyone who's ever played in it, any of the kids ever played in it, all remember this fondly. And often, a lot of times, it's the largest crowd they'll ever get. And you know, some will go on and play Division One soccer. They're still not going to get, you know, a little bit light tonight compared to most, but you get the 2,000 people at this event. And I think for us to carry that on and, and, and to keep it going, and then hopefully the generations behind kind of keep it going. Hopefully, there's a lot of kids that were here earlier in the night. We're, we'll, you know. 10 years from now we're playing in the game too you know and you hope their parents are involved you know and you hope their parents are help running this <laughs> and, uh, and the community keeps us going and, and I think when it's all said and done let you have this oh, it's safe nice shot there by Belmont and nice uh, lead uh, lead pass on the through ball there and a uh, great save by Ruben's goalie that was number 13 for Belmont I'm just trying to track that down I think that's Evan Yorkin. Nice shot by him, and it'll be Belmont's corner. So speaking of good shots, uh, your daughter was uh, one of the first goal scorer in the mm -hmm. PK round in the first game. What did that mean to you as a dad to know that your efforts gave her a night to remember? She'll remember that, that score for the rest of her life. It, 100%, it, yeah. I mean... And it's 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 great to see. I mean, it's you always want to see your child do well. You know, you know, especially under you know under stressful circumstances. And quite frankly, uh, you know, you don't get to practice penalties all that often, you know, especially in a kind of a game situation. So when the time comes, it's great to say, you know, what I was able to step up and do this. And so when the time comes when you are in a real penalty situation that actually matters, you know, you you're, you're a little bit better prepared for it. You know. Um, and is it true that she's a natural righty and she shot that PK yeah, with her left? It appears, yeah. Yes, he is. So it's a, um, it's something fun to watch. It's uh, something that she's worked hard in developing. And I, I encourage every young player out there to please work on your opposite foot. You get two feet, use them. You know, um, it, it, it makes a makes a big, big, big difference in in the development of players. And were you surprised that she took it with her left, or no. she's practiced it enough? Yeah, and I've seen it. Yeah, it doesn't. Goalies are much more used to the righty 100%. PK takers. So just like pitchers in baseball and other things, point guards in basketball, the lefty PK taker in soccer has a slight advantage over. Yeah. And, and, and she, she's very proud of it, as she should be. You know, she's worked hard on it. You know, and. And to be able to develop it, develop that skill to the point where, I mean, again, think about it. You're taking a penalty shot. It's already a little bit of a stressful environment to begin with. And all of a sudden, you're going to go off your natural foot. <laughs> you know, it's so so contrary to, you know, to, to a person's thought typically. So I just think it's, um, like I said, she's proud of it. And I'm proud of her for, for, for working at it and doing it. I think it's wonderful. You were speaking earlier that it's a great way to get involved in the community, being right. part of Soccer Night in Belmont. Since this started here, several other communities in eastern Massachusetts mm -hmm. have done something similar uh, to this, which is great. But uh, to keep it going, as you mentioned, more, more and more volunteers mm -hmm. uh, need to step up. As you look ahead to the next year or the next couple of years, what are the types of roles that would be good? And like if uh, parents of all the all different ages look at this you know ideally is it middle school parents getting involved high school parents getting involved all of the above um i would say more high school if you have a child playing in the high school program you should look to get involved um it's pedro and i mostly and we have some people volunteer at the event night you know um, fitzy for instance who takes care of the halftime show i mean if if pedro and i could not do that and and do everything else that's you know that we're engaged on on the field but I think if you have if you have a child playing in the program, I mean, literally, I, I, it would be nice to have four people involved in this when it's all said and done. I think, and, and it's more it's not really about the planning; it's more about really game. It's showtime, right? So when you're trying to, you know, talk to the players on both sides, talk to the coaches on both sides, get the procession set up, all those other things going on. It'd be nice to have you know two people running the procession, one on one side, one on the other, and the us, us two kind of dealing with the referees and stuff like that. So. Um, it would be nice to have like four people involved. Um, 
<laughs> traditionally the girls program has actually had a higher representation of activity <laughs> if you know what i'm saying um the dads of girls have been very active in this so it'd be good to see something from the boys side yes it is a challenge the challenge has been yes, laid it is down a challenge. by sean Li Goulding like to, to see the that. parents I, I, of the boys i'd like to see that yeah, good we, thing it, we're doing this during the boys game yes you know and you know it, it's um but it'd be nice to see and um you know it's I, I think it's. I guess I think it's. I think this thing is can continue to evolve into. It gets should get better and better every year. You know. Um, you know, got the revolution to come this year again. Next year, I don't know if folks know. Two years from now, there's a women's team that's going to be starting up in Boston. We're going to engage them next year to get involved. I'm sure if they're if they're working on that's their community great. involvement, I'd like to see them involved. Um, you know, just you know, just to kind of cater to different parts of our community. And just think, you know, keep them all engaged in the game of soccer. So, and besides soccer, your family's also involved in hockey. Is that right? I, I have a son who plays hockey um, and soccer as well. And then Nora also plays lacrosse. She's on the on the, on the lacrosse, lacrosse team here too. So one of the things that is most impressive to me about Soccer Night is how active Belmont soccer and their young players are in this. And anticipating perhaps the day where they're going to walk on this field mm -hmm. in the in the maroon. Uh, talk about the uh, the participation of Belmont soccer. M many of those kids played a game earlier today on a Saturday. Yeah, but I, it's a it's a moment of excitement for them to be able to come out under the lights. I would think. For sure, I was very happy to see them playing today. <laughs> you know, the rain, and I, I was hoping they were playing, and they were playing today. And the parents were there. I think it's great. I think they should play in the rain. Get get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Get used to it, right? Because if you're going to continue to play, you should be doing it. I mean. I will say, as somebody who coached second soccer, too, I mean, there was a point in time where we were losing girls and, you know, at an alarming rate, and they were kind of getting bummed out because, the, you know, when you're a first grader girl and the boys started getting a little bit bigger and faster, they were kind of controlling the ball a lot more. So a few fathers, we kind of got together, spoke to the people and said, listen, we should probably sep separate the girls a little bit earlier and get them, in, you know, keep them playing, keep them playing. So, I mean, I'll fast forward then. You know, a lot of girls kept on playing. So we fast forward to freshman year when Nora was trying out freshman year. And I remember her telling me that there was like 96 girls trying out for soccer in Belmont. I'm like, there, there it is. That's incredible. You know what I'm saying? Girls were engaged. Girls kept on playing. They still want to play. And there's only like 350, uh, there's 350 students per class. Right. So if it's 50-50, you're getting somewhere about 180 or so girls. Yeah, so that was how Half of them were trying out. Yeah, so soccer. if you think about that, right? So it was, it was a, a nutty number. I mean, it's... It's a great number to have, you know, that many girls. It shows how competitive and how many girls still want to play. And then, like, this year, you know, my son was trying out for freshmen. Like, close to 40 boys were trying out for freshmen. Excellent. Like, these are kids who want to play. So, I mean, and, and when it's all said and done, you all check with all those kids, they all want to play in this game, you know? And it's part of it all. So they all want to be part of this game. So I think Belmont Youth Soccer does a wonderful job keeping kids engaged. I think they've been doing, they, they, they're taking another step forward, too, where even the kids who aren't fortunate enough to make the teams, they are giving them an outlet so they can play. They can play in the Bay State League and in the high school league. So the kids still have an opportunity to play above and beyond the high school game. So I think Belmont Youth Soccer has done a wonderful job. And and it's it, they've, they've been getting better and better every year. So. And last question, Sean. Who were the heroes of getting the lights back on oh so goodness. that we could finish soccer night in Belmont? <laughs> yeah, two things we can't control, the weather and the generator, right? Um, you know, I the staff, I guess the staff was over there. I kind of stayed away from it. I left them be. They didn't need me hanging over them. It's a stressful situation. The last thing in the world is me hanging over you. So I kind of understood what was happening, you know, and I and I just okay. And when, when when things were done over there, when they got the lights back up and running, I said, okay, talk to me. <laughs> what do I need to know? And I was, you know, briefed them what was what they thought the situation may be, and that was that was it. So an unfortunate event. It made for a really unique opportunity for the for the for the students to get involved with the cameras and the camera lights and so forth. And it sounds like they had a great photo from them from the from that. And that'll be a memorable experience. One more chalk that up for another memorable soccer night experience. And sure, we'll all see on Facebook some good <laughs> or other types of social media, probably Instagram, um, some wonderful shots of what was happening yeah, when yeah. the lights were off here and. Uh, if you're wondering kind of what happened, the generator um, stopped working. They're on a generator this mm -hmm. year at Harris Field because they used to get power from the hockey rink. Correct. And in the construction of the new rink, they had to create a temporary solution. So hopefully it's the first and only time that will happen. 
here at Harris Field. But Sean Golding, thanks to you and to Pedro and for lining up all the volunteers to make this ninth soccer night in Belmont such a success. Um, there haven't been many soccer nights where both Belmont teams win. Right. So uh, we're crediting you and Pedro <laughs> totally for that. And um, sure. Again, uh, we'll Sean it. and Pedro would love additional people to get involved. The more hands, the merrier. And uh, it's a great way to meet people in Belmont, particularly for people who are new uh, to the community. Um, more people from Belmont show up on this night typically than any place else. So it's a great place to be. It is definitely a great, great event, great family event. It's good to see young families here. And if I can throw a final plug in here, uh, friends of Belmont Soccer could use some help. So if people have an opportunity, if you're... Um, especially hopefully some people bought some raffles. They had a wonderful raffle table here tonight. Um, and, you know, la last year's fund fundraising efforts were kind of stifled a little bit, so they're a little bit behind the eight ball. So we're hoping people would uh, support FOBs and what they do and what and what they're actually giving a lot of money. And their money goes to Direct. giving uniforms. Correctly. Like uh, warm-up gear and that extra things that the coaches need. So the coaches for both varsity uh, varsity JV freshmen the coaches have a wish list and fobs tries to 100%. give as many things on those wish lists 100% and possible. it's and it's all, it goes from freshman team all the way up to varsity team so all all basically all players in the, in the um, in the program do, do benefit from fobs activities and um, and they've been they've been they're great partners they're great partners and great supporters of soccer night they're one of our, you know, monetary sponsors. So, folks, if you have an opportunity to please support your, your the, the FOBS program, we really would appreciate it. But you can find them online at friendsofbelmontsoccer.org. He's Sean Goulding, along with Pedro Santos, the leaders of Soccer Night in Belmont. Thanks for everything, Sean. Thank you for having us. And one, th thanks, guys. You've done a great job this evening. And Thank appreciate you. appreciate you being here. Take care. Nice shot for Belmont just over the crossbar. Belmont's not able to add to their 3-0 lead, but uh, continuing the offensive attack while Sean was on with us, there were a couple of good saves by Thomas Borkowski. And the general flow of the game has continued with Belmont in control of most of the action. But Woburn continued to, continuing to play hard, which is what you'd like to see. Wonder if both um, coaches will be trying to play uh, the guys who haven't gotten in yet. What do you think, Bill? Yeah, it looks like there, there's been a couple subs um, since you guys were talking. Number 17, Arvino Mahadi has entered the game. And uh, also... Uh, Number 26, uh, Sam Winkler Thomas at right back. So I think that that pretty much accounts for just about everybody has played. Um, I think another player who I coached back in the day, Douglas Dombo, I believe he's injured. I don't think he's been in the game yet. But other than that, I believe the whole team has played tonight, which is great to see. And I think it's tough for coaches, too, because of the uh, the way MIA does their power rankings now. So it, I think a, th a three-goal victory is the, in terms of the power ranking points, is the, the maximum you can get, So, um, which is good. So you know, teams don't want to run up the scores. They're not benefited by doing so. But Belmont so. wants to keep the 3-0. They want to keep the 3-0 lead. So I think that probably plays into the mind of, of, of some certain coaching decisions. Did you happen to get a good look while um, Sean was on uh, what happened on the Belmont um, on the goal that didn't count for Ruben? I did not. Oh, speaking of Douglas, here Is we he go, number, number 10, 10, Douglas Dombo. He plays forward. He does. He, he was a speed demon back in the day when I coached him. He's a great kid. I believe his brother Luxon played in college. He played for Belmont High, he was a captain. And it's really good to see Douglas out there. Great.
Cross in by Belmont. Woburn trying to clear the box, unable to do it. Shot by Belmont, look at that. I thought it was in, uh, called Lard. it before it hit the net. Hit the crossbar instead, nice shot. Who was that? That was Lawrence too, and another great shot by Aiden Doken here. Belmont really putting on the pressure in the last five minutes. Good to see them trying to finish the game strong. Evan Yorkins had a bunch of good chances since he's been in as well. A lot of Bel Belmont players. Good contribution tonight. Good film for them. You mentioned that your son, uh, Owen, uh, just committed uh, to play at RPI. What was the involvement of film like tonight in terms of him being able to be recruited? by a school a couple hundred miles away. Was it all about the film? And were you up late night editing videos <laughs> or what, Bill? Well, there, there's definitely a, a, a film is certainly part of it. Um, you know, Fobbs, who I know we've talked about tonight, is a head over temp right there by Colin Green. So Fobbs has provided um, Belmont Soccer with these the Veo cameras. You probably can't see it, but it's across the field there on the stand. Hopefully it's not getting destroyed in this wet weather but every game is filmed um, and the kids have the ability to to make highlight reels very easily they can they can kind of tag uh, good plays that they make and you know really easily put together highlight clips so in terms of like the college process and a lot of these kids play most of the I'd say the majority of the kids play on the club team as well and the, and the clubs typically record the games too so yeah so that I mean I think that recruiting process is different for everybody but um certainly in owen's case and i know a, a lot a lot of cases uh you know it's kind of almost it's almost like finding a job you put together your kind of your soccer resume and your highlight film and you and you start to contact coaches and that's kind of like you know phase one of it and then um looks like we're full time here and a little bit surprising. I thought we had a minute left to go. Maybe the refs want to get out of here. Or maybe Everybody's because wet of that cold. delay. Uh, but still stay with us for the presentation of the player of the game award and the presentation of the Phoenix Cup. Belmont wins this doubleheader. The girls won the PKs um, after a 0-0 tie in regulation. The Belmont PA just talking about who scored the three goals. Um, one was scored on a header, Daniel Liu. Then Andrew Sh uh, Schreiner scored on a beautiful header and Andre Leshner had scored the goal in between. Player of the game. They're just announcing the player of the game. It goes to uh, Daniel Liu, senior number 18 for uh, one goal and two assists, and what I thought was the play of the game, uh, the, and the, the, the play of the game was his cross to Andrew Schreiner for the head. It was a great play by Daniel Liu. If I were to say what was the second best play of the game, it was his pass to Ian, uh, Andre Leshner, and then he just outcompeted people in the box for that third header. So well deserved by Daniel Liu. Absolutely. Another great game by Daniel and huge contributions tonight on all three goals. So well deserving. So Belmont goes to 4 1 and 1 on the season. As you were talking about, Bill, their, uh, their biggest week uh, and their biggest test is coming up. Three games this week against two of the uh, perennial. Uh, strongest teams in Winchester and Lexington. What do you think they can take away from this win? Well, I think it's, it's something that they can certainly build upon. Uh, the, the way they moved the ball through the midfield, the way they were 
getting numbers up and, and creating scoring chances. Uh, they're pretty solid in the back as well. Not, not too many scoring chances from Woburn other than that, that one. So, And you can see uh, Belmont, Daniel Liu won the, won his award in switching shirts, I think, with one of the Woburn players. So you might hear some screaming in the background there. There's some uh, happy you campers. You recognize who, that voice? Yeah, I recognize that voice. A happy camper who I might be related to has just apparently won the lottery. If you've ever been near a football field, a uh, soccer field in town, if there's a, a woman that's leading the cheers and getting everybody fired up for the game, it's usually Virginia Filler, Bill's wife. So you have a family member who won the, won the raffle it tonight? Sounds like Virginia did. Lucky her. So Daniel Liu has received his player of the game, and now you'll see his teammates with him, led by the captains, Andrew Schreiner and Owen Filler to raise the Phoenix Cup. Can we live for the nights we remember. This is one of the moments that these two will remember as captains and friends since kindergarten. And the Belmont Boys Varsity Soccer prevails tonight and raises the Phoenix Cup. Well, happy for the boys. They, they deserve the victory tonight. They played really well, and they should be proud of themselves. And the double victory for Belmont. The girls went in the first, first leg of the match tonight. Boys went in the second. Soccer night in Belmont. Soccer it's all night about. is a celebration of soccer, not just of the varsity teams for the boys and girls here at the high school, but it's been a great night. We thank everybody who had a piece uh, to make it a, a part of this success. Uh, certainly couldn't bring you this broadcast if it wasn't for the great team at Belmont Media led by Jeff Hansel and the guy who works behind the scenes to make this happen, Jeremy Meserve. Thank you to Jeff and Jeremy and the whole team at Belmont Media for our broadcasters in the first game. Uh, Chris Yu and for Bill uh, filler here in the second game. I'm Scott Landry saying thank you so much for broad for listening to the broadcast, for joining us tonight. So long from Harris Field, where the final score of the second game is Belmont 3, Brin 0.